file, new, then A4 in. That's right, and OK. You'll need to rotate your palette, so you need to go to Image, Transform, Rotate, and so that it's Landscape. Then get your image from a folder that's on your desktop. And you can also go to File Open or File New or just drag it across like this and drop it in the middle of your paper. I'm now looking for, um, oops, I think it's in Tools, yes, um, Scale. Or you can just use the shortcut Shift S and enlarge the picture that you're going to transform into your background. It doesn't really matter which picture it is because if you've distorted it a lot you won't be able to tell what it is. So I'm now going to use the warp transformation tool which is also if you go into tools and then it's in the bottom of the transformation tool selection. You can adjust all of these different settings. I'm on move pixels and I've got a large brush and I'm just dragging the picture to get a sort of wavy distortion that starts to look a bit like a landscape. You don't want to use a picture that is too brightly coloured because it can get very um, distracting with all the bright colours. Now we're going to um, Tools Actually I think I'm looking for the Blur tool. Oops, what am I looking for? Yes, there's the blur tool and actually I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the um, the smudge, smudge uh, finger tool which is down here or you could just use the shortcut which is S. And there's the settings. I made my brush smaller and I'm just dragging it to smudge in a horizontal pattern creating a background. Now the background needs to be blurry and not so detailed because um, in a landscape you get an effect called aerial perspective which is um, when particles in the atmosphere make things look sort of more blurred and um, less detailed, a bit like fog as you go through into the distance. You can also paint and onto the background layer to adjust the colours. So I'm just changing my brush to a softer brush or patterned brush and um, changing the size of it and lowering the opacity and sort of creating this nice sort of bubble texture to soften the background a bit further. So you need the background to be lighter and less detailed than the foreground. So you've got the foreground, which is the darkest, most detailed, middle ground and then background. So I've just dragged um, an ink biomorphic form onto the picture 
and I'm going to select the uh, fuzzy select tool uh, to select some of the background to cut out. So I've selected the background but you'll notice it's just cut out to the background white layer. So I'm going to undo that a moment and I'm going to add an alpha channel. There we go, right click and add alpha channel or press option, click and that should give a trans that there we are there's the alpha channel and back to the layers and now I'm going to press control X and it should cut out there it is to the to the background underneath so if you find it doesn't cut out to the background underneath you need to add an alpha channel which is to the right of the layer that you're using and you press um, right click with your mouse or option click. Yeah, I'm just deleting most of the background layer. You can also use the color select tool which will select by color um, all those colors in your picture. So now I'm going to make it smaller or you can press shift S it's the shortcut there we go and use the move tool to move the um, oops on the, on the wrong layer make sure on the right layer the layer that you're on has a white um, background a white uh, border around it that's the layer that you're working on and you can tell that by looking in the layers palette Now you'll notice that there's a dotted line, um, a, a border. So if you want to increase the layer boundary because you want to stretch your picture, you'll need to go into layer boundary in the layers palette and you can increase the layer boundary size. Now this is useful, very useful if you want to do this, if you want to stretch your biomorphic form beyond the layer boundary, you'll need to make your layer boundary bigger. And I'm just centering my uh, design. So now the layer boundary is much larger and I've got space in order to stretch the, um, the biomorphic form. So I'm going into the warp transformation tool and I'm going to just change some of the, some of the things within a warp transformation. There we go. The slider doesn't work, you've always got the arrows so now I'm using the move tool and to stretch so we don't have the straight edge. So I'm extending the, the form so it, um, it doesn't have the straight edge from the paper that it was originally painted on. So you can change your biomorphic form if you want to or change the shape of anything by cutting out, adding pieces or just by stretching. I think I'm making the brush a bit smaller so I get a more pointed um, shape. Now I'm going to move it. I still think it's probably a little bit too big. Let's see what it looks like over here. Yes. So scale, shift S, make it a bit smaller, press scale or enter. and use the move tool to move it. If you want to rotate it, you can press press um, shift R or the rotation tool if you've got that on the side. And you just click and you drag with your mouse to um, rotate it. And you press enter. Oops, make sure you're on the right layer. I was moving the wrong layer there. The layer that you need to work on has the white border around it. Yeah, I think I'll try it a bit smaller. It doesn't really work in the foreground, so I'm sort of moving it sort of semi middle ground
I'm now adding another shape. It's a flower, so I need to import that particular file type. And on the right layer, I'm going to use the fuzzy select tool to click on the white border and then press Command X to get rid of that. So if you want to get rid of something that's all one color, you can use the fuzzy select tool. Um, now I'm using the um, the lasso tool or freehand select, drawing a shape around that I want to cut out. Now if you want to take a bit more care, it will you need to do this a bit more slowly, um, but I'm just doing it quite quickly. Double click on where you started from. And then you select inverse, so that's, and then control X. So you cut out the background. Now change the scale. That's shift S. Now you'll notice that when I pasted it, it came up as a floating layer. And then you need to, you need to click on the little green square that was in the bottom of the left hand corner of the layers palette if it comes up as a floating layer. Okay, so making it a bit bigger. Trying it on, on a large, have something larger in the foreground and then smaller in the background to get a sense of perspective. I think I'm going to change, try using curves to experiment with changing the colour. So you just move, click and move the line just to see what effects it has. Really dark, no, I don't want it that dark. Uh, black silhouette doesn't work for that shape, I don't think. But you can use the curves palette like that to get a black silhouette. A bit too light. Oh, okay. Once you get an effect that you think you might like, then you just press OK. Now I'm going to add another picture. I'm going to add another biomorphic form and you might have to press convert. Oh no, it's a mushroom. Okay. Um, then you want to cut it out again with the freehand select tool. Cut a shape out because it's the picture is just a rectangle at the moment. So you can just draw your own shape. So I'm following some of the shapes of the mushrooms to create a shape. Double click on where you started. Whoops. That seems to have jumped. Let's see if I can just do that again. So if you if you don't like your selection lines, you go to select none and then you can start again. So I'm just drawing my shape again. Double click. Select invert. Oh no, I don't really want to do that because I want the shape. Oh, I've cut it out. Okay. But it needs an alpha channel because it's just cut it out to a white background. So add alpha channel. Oops. If you've accidentally clicked on something, there we go. Control X. I seem to be in... Um, the selection tool again so if you happen to be accidentally in a selection tool you just make a shape and then and then press select none I'm putting this set in the foreground they look a bit like stone flat stones although it's mushrooms I'm experimenting to see what shape I want and where I want to put it there it is I 
If you want to change the order of your layers, you just click and drag, or you can use the arrows keys up and down on the bottom of the layers palette. I'm drawing a, 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 a circle with the ellipse tool because I want to make a planet in the background. Oh, I didn't get that shape quite right. Let's do it again. You might have to press shift if you want to get a perfect circle while you're drawing it. So I'm just looking for the texture that I want to copy for my planet and I might copy that background texture. Oops, didn't want to do that. Edit undo. If you make a mistake, you can go to edit undo. Make sure you're on the right layer. I'm on the wrong uh, right layer, where, the layer that I want to cut out. Whoops, and I've um, cut and pasted. Right, click on the green square if you've got a floating layer. And there, it should be there. So I'm going to use the move tool and move it across. We just about see it. So I'm going to have to experiment with some contrasts on it to make it stand out a bit better. Now if I click on the uh, lock alpha channel on the moon layer, then when I paint on it, the paint will only go on the moon. It won't go on the transparent background around the moon. So I'm now going to put some shadows on it. So I'm going to choose, I think, a sort of dark purpley colour. Make it, uh, with the brush, make it a little bit opaque so it doesn't go on too heavy and choose a soft brush. So I'm going to paint some shadows. Oops. That was a bit too small, that brush. A bit bigger. Some shadows. Needs to be a little bit more opaque. I think I'll choose black. Oop, a little bit softer. It's a bit harsh. A bit more opaque. That's better. Um, some softer shadows around so that it looks more like a, a 3D sphere. Of course, you could have cut your planet out from any section. I'm going to change the colours. I'm going to add a bit of pink to it, I think. A pink uh, highlight. There we go. I'm not sure I want where I want the planet, so I'm just trying it out in different places. I think I prefer over there. Yeah, about there, I think. I think the flower is a bit too big. I might have to make it a bit smaller. I'm thinking about making it smaller. Oops. Or am I going to add a biomorphic form this time? So it's really easy if you want to add something just to have it in a folder and then you can just click on it and just drag it straight across onto your page. So I'm just stretching the folder so I can see what's in it. To choose something else. Oh yes. Now this is very light, this biomorphic form. You might want to experiment with the, the levels to make it a bit darker in the colour, so, or the threshold even. So you can move the threshold slider. I'd move it quite slowly. So that makes it darker, that's quite nice. But I'm, oh, and if you move the other side, you can make it in negative, so black with white. I'm not sure if I want that though, so I'm just playing around with it at the moment.
oops, let's move it back again. And you can always do um, invert the picture as well. So you can see all the possibilities within the threshold palette. I think I'm trying to get it back to where it was before, but it's not really working. So I'm just going to press OK and then I'm going to go to cutting out the black area. Add alpha channel. Yeah. Let's cut out it now. Select none. Let's get rid of the selection lines. Oh, it seems to have vanished. I think I might have to do that again. So if you make a mistake, you might have to just redo it. So I'm just dragging it onto the page. right click, add alpha channel and then control X. There we go. And select none to get rid of the selection lines. It's quite light though. There it is. Very light. Doesn't really show up on the um, background though. Whoops. I wonder if it shows up more on the green. No. It's kind of nice and delicate though. That's why you've got to be careful to balance plain colours with patterns because if you have too many patterns um, you won't be able to see some of the shapes so I've just turned it into negative and I'm going to put it up in the sky area because it's plainer and um, you can see it a bit more clearly because it, it's totally overwhelmed with the pattern in the foreground. So now I'm making this flower a little bit smaller and um, so that I can see the biomorphic form that I just put in the background. And now I'm going to check, experiment with hue saturation. So you can just move the sliders and it will change the color. You can also choose individual colors if you want to. You just click on the little dots um, by the colors at the top of the um, hue saturation palette. So I think I might go for um, I might go for a blue flower. I'm just seeing what it looks like if it was a bit darker, experimenting with the lightness and the saturation is the amount of colour. So the saturation is how vivid it is. If you lower it completely, it turns to grey or black and white and increase it, it's very vivid and very highly coloured. I don't want anything too distracting. OK, so now I want to copy using the copy, I'm copying this flower, I'm going to make several copies of it and I'm moving that, making it smaller. copying it again, moving it. You just click on the copy page um, 
icon at the bottom of the layers palette. I'm having another flower, copying it again. It's always better to have groups of um, three or four or five uneven numbers. Always look better than groups of even numbers. Click move tool. 